you know. Hi everybody, how you doing? Um, we're Friday, happy Friday. Oh, definitely a TGI Friday today. I'm going to be having a very large G&T later. Um, how's everybody doing? Who has, who's there? Who's coming online? Anybody joining us today? I hope you all are. Um, so we're going to do some needle turn applique today. Um, and I thought I'd give you as well a little bit of a, you know, bit of story about the quilt behind and my kind of journey into to needle turn. Um, it's not something that I do a massive amount of, but I do really enjoy it. And um, I actually, I prefer it personally to, um, what's the word, uh, Bond Web applique, just because I prefer the look of it. Um, we do quite a lot of um, Bond Web and machine applique. Um, uh, but if I've got time <laughs> and if I've got the patience, um, I will tend to go to needle turn. Um, I like the simplicity and I like the fact it's quite a, a gentle, you know, um, what's the word? Um, so yeah, it's a bit meditative. I can never say that word, meditative. <laughs> um, a way of sewing as well, because it's, it's, it's very, um, it's quite a slow process. It's no, this is not a quick process, this one, okay? Um, you do get quicker. You definitely do get quicker doing it. So, um, but we're gonna go through that in a minute. And I'm gonna go through some of the, I'm gonna go through the quilt behind us. Um, and I'm also gonna show you how to do it and some of the products I use as well. Okay, so who's there? Who's there to start with? So we've got Sean, we've got Christine, we've got Nikki, Linda, Suzanne, Kate, Marilyn, oh, Heather, lovely. those are people. Fab, hi guys, hi everybody, hope you're all okay. Um, weather's turned today, isn't it? I mean, the sun's out, but the wind is really, really blustery. Brilliant washing day. I got some washing on the line earlier. Made the boys do it. Ha <laughs> ha. So, um, so needle turn applique is um, a, a form of hand applique, um, and it's the complete opposite to bond web. We're bond web. We're applying a glue, and we're we put it on the back of the fabric, and we stick the fabrics down, and then we sew into it. Um, needle turn, as you'll see in a moment, is the complete opposite. You work on the the right side of the fabric. Use different products and stuff. So. Um, I've I've done a lot when I was so I'm going to start with this quilt okay so there's a bit of a story about this quilt bear with me mute me if you don't want to listen to it okay so um, this is this is my oldest work in progress as well um, it's about five years old now and um, it's all done by hand okay which you know guys I'm not a hand sewer I've never I've always been about the machine sewing but this one was all done by hand and we actually did it the Irish circles it's called and we did it as a block of the month when we first opened um, I'm gonna move to the side a little bit so you can see it okay um, there are lots of things on there um, I mean, it's a huge quilt as well. I mean, it goes, it's massive. It actually brought the mirror down earlier. I tucked it over the mirror and it's so heavy. The mirror crashed down and I had to hold it and shout for help and feel like to come running downstairs because I'm <laughs> like this, braced against the wall, trying to hold the mirror up. Um, and there's lots of things on there that I look at them now and I think, oh God, that's really bad. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, that piecing is really bad. That needle turn is really not great. Um, but at the same point, that this was my journey into needle turn. Some of the earlier pieces, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get Drew to come round actually, so we can get some close-ups on this. Okay, hopefully you guys can uh, see some of these things while I point it out. So all of these were individual. If you come close, because I want to. If you can stand there, Drew. Okay. So all of these ones here were all individual blocks. Okay, that we put together. Um, and then obviously there were lots and lots of blocks. I think there was something like 30 blocks in total. And then it was all put together um, with this big circle and all in the center. Now, if you look at this one here, okay, I don't know if you can get a bit of a close up on this one, Drew. This one here is really quite bad. You know, I've lost my points on my teardrops. Nothing's quite circular. You can see the stitching with it. Um, I obviously gave up with the, the hearts and just blanket stitched them on. OK, it's really not very good. I'm not going to change it, though. It's there. It's part of the quilt. Um, it shows that actually I was a beginner when I started this with needle turn. Anyway, I'd, I'd not done a lot of needle turn. So I was I was more of a, you know, a beginner at that point. However, if you look up at um, oh, you can see all the bits of thread and all sorts all still all over it. If you look at these little gumdrops up here, you can see that I've got a much nicer 
rounder curve on these. I mean, some of them are still a little bit dodgy, but they are much better. And you can't really, like this one here, I don't know if you go down to this one, Joe, you can see you can't see the stitching on those, you know, which is what the look you kind of want. You don't want to see the stitching. Um, this one here, this one's a little bit better. This must have been one of the later ones. Um, where actually I kind of perfected what I was doing by this point a little bit, not perfected, not in any way, but I'd advanced with it. Um, and I'm going to show you the centrepiece as well, because there's a little bit of a history thing about the centre as well. So traditionally in Irish circles was a wedding quilt and it would have been, um, a you know, bride, new bride would have, have made one of these and her family would have made one of them for her to go away on her on her marital bed. Um, and this centerpiece here is really, really very traditional. And the appliques they would have put on them was all about their family and things that represent their family. Um, I mean, so I updated that. Um, I used things that were meaningful for me. Traditionally, and I'll show you the original pattern, it would have been birds and flowers and things like that, where I decided that wasn't necessarily for me. So I went with stuff that reminds me of my family. So I've got a little set of, Andrew, if you can see these, I've got a little set of wedding rings here that I did, which is me and my husband. Um, I've got these five little hearts here, which are my five boys, my five sons. And then actually I need to add a, add a B on now, don't I, for Beth? You do need to add a B. Yeah, yeah. I need to add a B on to Drew's for Beth. So um, as they've had partners, so there's my, my little part there for Rory, and then I've added Cara in. So I've added them in. There's my there's a white gecko there for white gecko. I've got a turtle and a dragonfly down here, which are um, representing my mom, my mum and dad. I've got my sisters and their kids on here. So I've got my my sister and her two kids. So she's got a girl and a boy. My other sister and her husband, and she's got they've got two boys. My other sister Jenny, and she's got four kids. You know, so there's all bits on there. There's a there's a sewing reel that I've embroidered on here. Um, because of my love of sewing and stuff. There's Sarah and Dave. So I've got a, a daisy here for Okay, so there's all people there that, you know, me. it's it's meaningful to me. It's about people that are important to me and my family and stuff. So, um, so I just thought I'd take you through that so you could kind of see that, you know, even if your, your needle turn's not brilliant to start with, there is definitely a journey with needle tone. Don't expect it to be perfect to start with, but it's about about that learning process and about you know getting you know making it. Uh, I don't know if actually if you can come down to this one. I don't know if you can come down to this one. You can see uh, this was I think was one of the very last ones I did, and you can see this is much much. Hopefully you can see this is much much neater, and I've got those hearts quite nice on those, and you can't see my stitching. So. Um, that's a little bit about that. I'm going to tell you about the, this actual quilt as well. There's another silly story about this. So, but we'll go back round. So, oh, hi. <laughs> go back round so you can, uh, so I can talk to you. So this pattern actually is, um, I paid a lot of money to get this from Australia. I think I paid something like 65 Australian dollars, which is about 50 quid. Um, and we had to have the license and stuff to do it as a block of the month as well. Um, so I don't know if you can, let me take this front page off. It's a humongous pattern. I mean, you can see that's the whole pattern. There was just sheets and sheets and sheets of it. So this is, the, this is um, Karen Cunningham designs. This is her original pattern, the one that she did. So I will tell you the story about this it's a story, but it's, uh, it's funny. It's, it's a, one of those lovely life coincidences. Um, for my husband Phil's 40th birthday, we went off to Amsterdam with Sarah and Dave for the weekend to celebrate his birthday. They've got a couple of really nice quilt shops there, so of course we had to find them and go in them. <laughs> well, he leave the, well, he didn't leave the boys outside, we left them hanging around the door while Sarah and I rummaged through all the fabrics. And they had this quilt hung up from the ceiling right over the stairwell, and I fell in love with it. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. So I asked the lady for the pattern. She said, oh, I'm really sorry. It was an Australian pattern, blah, blah, blah. It was block of the month. But she gave me the lady's name. I then contacted the lady in Australia and said, I'd like to buy the pattern. It took about three months, but eventually got the pattern. Um, and inside the pattern, it was um, the very first page was a little bit of history about it. And this is based on one of the oldest known um, quilts. It's um, which she'd seen in a museum and then wanted to do a more updated modern slightly more modern version of it 
Well, the new, I don't know, you know, some of you guys ladies also know, I'm, I'm born and bred Cheltenham in Gloucestershire. That's where I was born, where, where I lived until 20 years ago when we moved to Cardiff. Um, she'd seen it in Cheltenham Museum, which I thought was a lovely, bizarre little circle. So I'd been to uh, Amsterdam, saw a quilt I loved, got the pattern from Australia, and actually it's based on an, a very, very traditional quilt, which is owned by Cheltenham Museum, which is my hometown. So, yeah, it was that lovely sort of kind of serendipitous coincidence which I thought was really nice so this one is really special to me it I am hand quilting it as well um I don't do hand work but because I'd hand pieced all the blocks I decided I would hand quilt it um I did cheat and I machined all the blocks together but the quilting I am doing by hand hence why it's taking me so long and it's one of those things that gets put in a box out of the way <laughs> um, and then it comes out every you know every couple of months and I do another another little bit on it and then it goes back in so one day I'll finish it so um, so yeah so I'd like to see just as a little aside I'd like to see your oldest work in progress your oldest PhD your project half done or your oldest UFO unfinished object put me some posts on and we will we'll do a bit of a challenge post okay I know Sarah did one yesterday but we'll do another one as well um and yeah i'd like to see like to see all your well, well i'll pull out a prize i'll work something out for you maybe some of the some of the products we've got today i'll do a prize for the uh the oldest work in progress and we'll, we'll do a free prize draw so any comments or questions there anybody talking before we get started uh, so carrie owen says it's stunning and priceless yeah <laughs> well, i don't know about priceless but thank you <laughs> uh, sandra says uh much cl clearer thanks Oh. I think that's better. Uh, Marion's uh, beautiful heirloom quilt. Yes, yeah, it's something that this one will stay with me. This is, uh, you know, it's it, and I, I can add to it. I can add to this embroidery as I have, as you know, grandkids and stuff like that appear and stuff. I can add to it. Uh, Sally, uh, sorry, sorry, said I'm still working on mine. Ah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> and then Linda said it's beautifully personal. Yes, it is very, very personal. So, thank you. Yes, it's um, yeah, just a little bit of me chattering on and giving you a bit of a history of my old, not only my oldest work in progress, but um, you know, about Needleton as well, about being kind to yourself. And I look at it now and go, ooh, ooh, you know. But there's there's bits in there that are okay. There's bits in there that I'm really pleased with. There's bits in there I'm not. So. It's about being kind to yourself, isn't it? I mean, it's National Mental Health Week as well. So, you know, be kind to ourselves. Be kind to ourselves about our work. You're creating something, you know. And yes, some of it's a bit dodgy. But do you know what? Overall, it looks all right. So, on to needle turn. Now, I'm going to do the tulips again, okay, on the needle turn. Just because I want two tulip blocks in my isolation quilt. So, I'm going to do the other one machine applique. But I thought rather than me having yet another scrappy bit sat around, a, you know, a sample bit... I thought I'd do with the tulips again. All right. Couple of little things that I really like to use. So you're going to need freezer paper. For needle turn, you're going to need freezer paper. I'll get this on. Don't think it's on the website yet, but I'll get this onto the website if you need freezer paper. So what freezer paper is, it's like a grease proof paper with a wax back in. You might have used it before. Sometimes it's used if you're doing um, piecing but with templates, okay? So, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I could feel that sneeze come in. That'll be another one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's always in three, isn't it? <laughs> so, it's got a wax coating on it, on the back of it, and it's just paper the other side, okay? The wax actually, just when ironed, gently sticks to the fabric so that you can transfer a template from paper to fabric. Okay, which is what we're going to do with this. So the other thing I really like as well are these little tiny applique pins. They're back from Clover and you might have seen me use them the other day. I know Sarah uses them a lot when she's doing toy making as well because they're really nice and little and you can get like really pin the curves and stuff. I really like these for, uh, for needle turn because they're so short and if you're doing lots of little pieces you can really get the points in. And the other thing I really like as well are these Roxanne chalk markers. These are going on the website as well. We've got them in packs of four. And it is a chalk pen, but it's mixed slightly with a... with a. It's not wax. They are water-soluble, so they will wash off. Um, there are no waxes or dyes or waxes added, but this they've added some sort of stabiliser to the chalk. So you know with some chalk pencils, you, do, you start drawing and they just crumble and you don't get a nice line. With these, they've added a stabiliser to the chalk and 
they're just brilliant I absolutely love them I use them all the time for this sort of work or if I'm marking dark fabrics you know if you doing half square triangles and you're doing it on a, on dark fabrics you can't necessarily see your fricks on pens and stuff so these are brilliant and you get two white and two silver in them I think they're 8 99 for a pack which sounds quite a lot for pencils but they will last for ages they don't, they're like shatterproof and stuff as well so if you drop them they don't they don't shatter up so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pop that aside a second I've got myself a bit of freezer paper and I'm gonna use my tulip templates which uh, sorry two seconds I just need to grab a pencil so all my pencils seem to have vanished there we go um, and we're going to draw out the template now <clears throat> you will have noticed when you did the if you did this or any applique template with bond web you end up with a reverse image because you're putting the bond web on the back of the fabric so when you turn it over the right way it's a reverse image of whatever it is that the template looks like with freezer paper you don't because you're working on the right sides okay are you all with me so far any comments or questions there all i'm going to do i'm just going to draw out a couple of the petals while drew's reading the comments out okay mm. it's only jan who said anything uh jan said oh i need to get some of them okay doke uh linda says bins been emptied no bins been emptied oh have you been throwing stuff away missus uh, you've been throwing stuff away again <laughs> what have you been throwing away <laughs> Hmm. Okay, so I'm just drawing out a couple of these petals. Okay. Carrie says she's with us. Cool. Hi, Carrie. I saw your uh, your heart yesterday on a mess on the on the messages you sent me. It looks fantastic. You're doing a really lovely job at that. Really nice seeing that. Uh, see, Carrie's doing um, the scrappy log cabin quilt, um, which is a class we did a little while ago. Um, but it's um, she's doing it quilt as you go and she's put a border on it and it looks fantastic really really lovely it's beautiful really beautiful so I'm just cutting out uh, drawing out just a couple of those little shapes I'm only just gonna I'm just gonna do the the petal bit on this just just for now okay I would mark up as well which ones they are so I've just drawn those out and then we're gonna cut these out okay so now, I'm being very naughty and using a pair of fabric scissors, but that's because I can't find my paper scissors. They've gone walkabout. Um, <clears throat> now, with Bond Web, you cut it out bigger, don't you? If you remember, you cut out bigger, and then once you've ironed it onto the fabric, you would then cut it out on the line. It's different with freezer paper. So I've drawn on the paper side. This is the wax side. With freezer paper, for needle turn, you want to cut the shape out, the exact shape out that you want. Okay? So it's um so it's a template basically you'll cut the fabric bigger you won't cut the um you won't cut through you want this to be the shape that you want the petal to be or whatever it is to be okay so i'm cutting it slightly wonky there there we go so i'm cutting it because what i'm doing is actually making a template um, so i'm just going to cut these out anybody else got any questions what are you all up to talk to me ladies just while i'm cutting Carrie said it's your t your t uh, tutorial. I can't say it. Tutorial. T oh, bless you. Tutoring. <laughs> no, um, it's not at all. It's beautiful. You do some lovely work. But thank you. <laughs> uh, Sandra says those chalk pens seem good. Yeah, um, they really are. Really are. How many I've bought over the years, and how many? However, you sharpen them, they still shatter. Yeah. No, I have to say these Roxanne ones. Then, like I said, they're not not cheap for pencils. They're like. Yeah, I think they're eight ninety nine. I will double check, but um, they are brilliant. I really, really like them. I really like the Roxanne products. There we go. Okay, so what I've done there is just cut out the start of the tulip. Okay. So everything's a little bit more relaxed today. I'm a little bit more chilled. We've got loads of all up to date with Hachanda. We're we're on on in control today, so I'm feeling nice and chilled today. So this is nice. It's all nice and relaxing. <laughs> So I'm going to use um, I'm going to use some of this blue again. I think use this blue again because I liked um, the stripiness. In fact, Taryn showed me sent us a, a picture of her tulip block, and she'd used the most amazing stripy fabric, and it looked fantastic on the tulips. I was really impressed with that. It looked gorgeous. So with these little templates, now 
want to pop them up I'm going to use this piece actually because it's just a wee bit bigger so you guys can see I'm going to put them on the right side of the fabric which I know feels odd but it's it's correct okay so I'm going to put on the right side of the fabric like this and I'm going to very gently just press that into place okay now freezer paper templates you can use three four times you can see if I peel that off it peels off straight away there's no residue on there and you've still got a little bit of wax I can then if just you know if I was doing my next tulip I can then add it into another place so I'm gonna put this one over here I think so you can use them you can't use them indefinitely but you get three or four uses out of each template all right so I'm gonna iron that one onto there that one onto there like that Let's and you want to leave a little bit because you we're going to be cutting these out slightly bigger um, because of how it, the you need a seam allowance okay and then i'm going to use a little bit of this one just as my center of my petal everybody with me so far everybody okay christine says she's making a birthday bunting for her granddaughter ah oh, nice oh cute <laughs> sandra says good uh, good start to the bank holiday weekend it is well i've still got a humongous amount of work to do but actually today i've i'm feeling very in control today feeling all good my back's still a bit niggly but i'm i'm dealing with it maybe it's the bright lipstick i put a bright lipstick on this morning and i immediately fell better so <laughs> you won't want to draw around this template and that's where this is where i like these chalk pens okay so you're basically transferring that shape to the fabric and that's what the freezer paper does. It allows you, because I couldn't put this over the template and see through to draw it. You might do on a very, very pale fabric. But what this is doing is allowing you to transfer that shape directly to the fabric. So we're going to go all the way around like this. Okay, like that. And then I can peel that off. Can you see? And I've got that on there. And I'm going to do the same on these ones. Okay, so I'm just using the the chalk pen and there is like I said there's a silver one and then two white ones in there and they do stay really nice and sharp you get a nice crisp finish to it now you could actually if you're using paler fabrics you could use Frixon pen you could use a pencil you know a, a, a mechanical pencil because you won't ever see this line but if you're new to needle turn and um, you're not overly confident with it yet I would suggest not using a pencil in case you do miss the line. Okay. Hopefully Jane, that makes as sense. do the pencils iron off? Uh, they don't iron off these pencils. They're water soluble. So you can just, um, with a bit of kitchen roll, damp kitchen roll, you can just dab them off and they're water soluble. They do actually brush off as well. If you give them a really good brush, they'll come off. But they're not, they're not like Frixons. They're not iron off ones. They are water soluble ones. So yeah, Kit water, cotton wool or kitchen roll. And just dab them with some, you know, damp. You don't need, it doesn't need to be mega wet. You can just dampen them and they, they come off. So I'm going to pull those ones off like that. And again, then I'm going to cut these out. And so what I want to do is you want to cut them out about an eighth of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch, about this much bigger. What's that? About an eighth of an inch. You want just enough. You don't want enough to turn under, but you don't want so much that you've got too much bulk. Okay, so about eight, an eighth to three eighths of an eighth to well, two eighths of a quarter. What's, what's between an eighth and a quarter? My brain's gone. Two eighths. Two eighths. No, two eighths is a quarter, isn't it? Oh, I can't go. I can't. My maths is not working today. Oh, that's not like me. About an eighth of an inch is fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to cut these out just slightly bigger. And it doesn't have to be really precise because all of this is going in my seam allowance, okay? Sorry, I'm really extra, oh, extra sneezy today. Don't know what's setting that off. Mind you, I've been had all the windows and doors open, so it's probably my silly hay fever because the wind's up. It will uh, have made me extra snuffly because it blows all the, the pollen and all around, doesn't it? Jane. All the dust. <laughs> Jane, case it just a wee bit bigger. Just, yeah, a weeny bit, a smidgen. <laughs> Whatever that measurement is, a smidgen. <laughs> okay, so 
like I said, this isn't probably very exciting to watch me do this, but it's a gentle kind of day. It's a, a relaxed kind of day. We're just going for it, something a little bit, making something creative, but without brushing too much. And so you haven't done your talk about your sewing bee this week. Oh, yeah. Then while I'm finishing doing these bits up, what about sewing bee? What did you think about the lingerie? I have to say, I thought they were pretty terrible. <laughs> I didn't think it was a good week at all. Um, I did like the... Um, and I really liked Liz's little black set. I thought that was really, really good. But I have to say, I thought it was really cruel of them to give them a bask. I mean, in three and a half hours. That is crazy amount of sewing in three and a half hours. It's no wonder none of them were very good, that they were all quite rushed. Um, I mean, my mum's done, I mean, my mum's dressmaker, she's made some amazing stuff. Um, you know, and she used to make tutus and all sorts, you know, like proper dance costumes and things. And to do a, a boned bask in three and a half hours, that's a hell of an ask. Uh, Linda Tomlinson said three sixteenth. Three six yes, three sixteenth. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> oh, see, I'm glad somebody's uh, <laughs> somebody's with me. And then Linda Head said, could you use a Frickson pen? You could use a Frickson. Absolutely, you could use a Frickson if you wanted to. Yes, no problem. So, okay, let me just double check which way around these are now because I put them down wrong hang on ladies sorry I just I've got those all turned upside down that one's going that's that one that's that one here we go okay I'm the wrong way around. so you then want to pop them onto now I would have I would probably do so again you want to think about which ones sit underneath the others so actually the stem and the the stem would go on first before anything else but I'm, because I want to show you how to do curves I'm gonna I'm gonna bodge it slightly later but I wanted to show you the curved bits because really we should put the stem in first because that's going to sit underneath everything else so you want to place them up so I just drawn some lines across my fabric so that I can put, get them in place okay and think about where those pieces are going to go all right so like that's going to sit under there like that now remember you've got excess so you're looking at your pencil lines rather than um anything else okay so i want them to sit about like that okay i'm going to work or we're going to work on this little one here first okay because that's underneath these two so I'm going to take those ones off. So I want to pop a pin in that one just to hold that one in place a second because that's now in the right position. And we're going to take these ones off. Okay. Now, the main trick with needle turn, which I didn't learn at the beginning, and it took me a long time to learn, <laughs> is matching your cotton with the fabric that you are appliqueing, not your background fabric. It means you've got to have a lot of different colours of cotton if you're doing lots of different colours, but it's absolutely vital that you match your cottons to the piece that you're appliqueing, not your background, okay? Um, it's Yes, it's easier if you do it all in the grey, you know, like if I did it all in grey, but I'd see my stitches. You would see your stitches. No matter how carefully you do it, you'd end up seeing some of the stitches. So change cottons, re-thread your needles, which I know is a pain, but <laughs> change cottons and make sure you're matching your cottons up, okay? Now, this, um, for anybody who watched the clamshells um, tutorial that we did, the English paper piece in, this is very, very similar, okay? But what you want to think about is the bits that are actually going to be shown. So Drew, if you just come down to this a minute, okay? So I don't need to I don't need to sew the whole of this down because the bit that's only going to be the bit that's going to be blah, 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 get the words out the bit that's going to be shown that you can see is just this bit here okay so all I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to start here and I'm going to needle turn up to there and down to there okay there's no need to needle turn this this will be held down later when I put the others on all right so this, this is going to be a lot of close work, Drew. So you want to get it in focus, get steady, all right? <laughs> now, 
make it easy on yourself and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be folding the fabric under on that drawn line let me grab my scissors on this drawn line here okay so to start off i cheat slightly and i fold it over on that line like that and i really finger press it you know really run my nail across along it like that to give myself a crease to start off it will just make life easier right Drew's just going to move the light so hopefully you guys we can pick this up a little bit more you want to hold this back out of the way and then you're going to just do a couple of you can do a knot but i prefer to do a back stitch just because i don't like the knots in it and i'm just going to do a couple of little back stitches behind the applique fabric so i can't see it just to secure my thread and then oh, i've got lipstick on my finger <laughs> and then we're going to lie that back down and I'm going to come up just like we did the clamshells. I'm going to come up right in the crease there. Hopefully you can see this. I'm kind of, I've brought my needle up right into. Oh, sorry guys. Like that. Okay, sorry. Oh. Two seconds. Let's just get Drew's toys messing about. I'm going to cut right in the crease like that. Excellent. Okay, and pull down. You then want to go just behind so I'm, I'm going to put my needle in i'm not putting it in perpendicular here i'm putting it just behind and come up into the crease again like that now the reason it's called needle turn oh uh, sorry guys do you want to take is it easier to take it out a second i think, I think it's too warm oh, hang on two seconds guys sorry we just gonna take this out she's gonna have to hold the phone okay so the reason it's called needle turn is you're actually going to use the edge edge of your needle to turn sorry it's quite difficult to do this away from me turn the fabric under okay so i'm using the edge of the needle to poke that fabric down in and i tend to use it i tend to use my thumbnail just to hold that in place so i'm going to go like that and up again through the crease like that and up again through the crease now i've now got to this the top of this curve so <laughs> I'm trying to hold it at an angle so that you can see. Now you've got quite a lot of bulk here, so you want to use the needle to gently tease that fabric in like that until it become until it gets the shape you want it to be. So I'm using the, the point of the needle like that, and can you see just kind of wiggling? I tend to give it a bit of a press as well, and then I can go behind and up. And I'm taking quite little stitches. I'll turn this over in a minute so you can see. I mean, they're not particularly little on the back, but little on the front, okay? And then I'm gonna turn it. I'm trying to do this towards you. So, and then use the needle again to tuck that fabric. <laughs> Sorry, it's really quite difficult to do away from yourself because I'm holding it at an angle where I can't actually see the line. So I'm using that needle to tuck that in like that. Oh, see, that bit doesn't wanna go in. There we go, like that. And you just use the edge of the needle and the more you do the easier this becomes and also when it's pointing towards you not pointed away from you because you can see what you're doing so i've tucked that that fabric in and then we're just going to go down and back up there just to secure that down behind and back up through like that okay and i'm going to work my way down to that top edge okay so I'm just using the edge of the needle just to poke it under. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, I've started with a really little piece, which isn't easy to uh, to work with. Bigger pieces are a lot easier. Hopefully you can see this, guys. There we go. OK, so I don't need to go any further than that because I'm going to put the big petals on. So I might just take one little more, actually, because that pencil, I'm following that pencil line. I'm bending it back so that the line that I drew is only just, just visible because that's the shape I want okay so can hopefully you can see that so I've just gone up and round there and then I'm just going to drop the needle through to the back like that and you can do just a couple of little back stitches obviously just catching the back fabric just to secure it okay like that and snip off okay so I, if I show you the back of this one a second not my threads you can see hopefully that I've used different coloured fabrics and you get like this little running stitch line here but on the front 
you can't see the fact hopefully that's picking it up you can't see your stitches at all okay so just while i pin the next one into place any questions there drew uh, anyone anybody got any questions linda head said it's so lovely and neat yes normal for you oh thank you it's uh, not not necessarily normal for me honey it's uh, it's um it's taken a lot of practice it's taken that much practice to get get to this stage and you know you should see i mean there's some people out there that do the most exquisite needle turn really complicated designs and tiny tiny little pieces so yeah but thank you that's kind of you so i'm just lining this one up now so i've got it in the right place okay is everybody with me so far is everybody understanding what i'm what i'm saying yeah please do uh do say if you're not okay so where's my needle gone oh there it's over here so because i've got a different color now i want to match my color to this one so i'm going to go with now this wasn't it's not quite a match but it's better than the the navy i had i should probably have gone with something because a weeny bit lighter but i didn't have one in my box at the time so uh i didn't have a chance to run back over the shop so i'm going to go with it okay just thread my needle which doesn't want to thread which is typical um, I would use an PK needle as well. Um, we've got them on the website. We've got some clover ones, but as fine a needle as you can handle, and quite a long needle for needle turn as well. So you know you don't want one, you don't want a tiny little quilter needle that are only sort of this this wide. You want something that's got a bit of length on it so that you can turn it under. Okay, so I'm going to start this time down here. So I don't ever tend to start on a point. I tend to start along a midline because actually points require you know, a little bit more. You've got to get you've got to get this fabric under as well as the point and that fabric. So I tend to sort of get the rhythm going by starting on a on a long point. So I'm just going to, again, do a couple, a couple little back stitches. OK, like that. Now, again, there are lots and lots of tutorials out there online, lots of people that have been doing it a lot, lot longer than I have and will have other hints and tips and stuff. So please do, you know, if you like this, have a little investigate, have a little investigate on YouTube um, and all sorts. So, again, I just always crease that to start with. I think it just helps it helps it get going. OK, so I'm going to go behind and come up into the crease. Drew, can you are you getting this? Is it? Hopefully you are. Yeah. And with this, because I'm overlapping this fabric, I'm actually going to go through both fabrics. I'm going to go through this and the backing fabric. OK, so that I'm holding this one in place, too. So I'm going to go down through both fabrics and up into the crease. And down and into the crease like that. And then I still need to use my needle just to tuck that under. There we go is not as neat as I'd like it but it's because I'm holding it at such a strange angle I can't see the what I'm doing and I'm turning it under I don't know if you can see can you see the white line that I drew here with my chalk pen I'm turning it under so that I'm rolling it so that it meets that white line okay and bring up like that and turn under the next bit and you just continue in this manner you just continue you always start with the the bottom most piece the piece that's going to be underneath everything else and we're just going to work our way round like this okay there we go like that so any questions there anybody there anybody got any comments or anything uh, they'd like to make in the heads of yes very understand uh, sorry understanding very well good uh, good good Linda Thomason said I love the idea and Sheila said, yes, very, uh, nice and very clear. Good, good. I've got, oh, I've got a little, no, I'm not there now. There we go. Okay, so I'm not going to do the whole thing because you don't need to see what sit and watch me stitch all of that. But I would just work my way through that one and then I would add on my other petal over the top like that and I would work my way around that one. Now, like I said, I should have really put the stem on. So when I get to this bit here, this bit here, I'm going to come down and I'm going to put my stem on first before I carry on stitching. But I wanted to show you the the sort of the bigger pieces, um, the curves. OK, 
um, and that's all it, that really is all there is to it with um, needle turn applique is that it's about following that line the most important bit is actually getting the shape right so if you come up to me let me drink. the most important bit with needle turn is matching your cottons okay that really does is a is a multitude of it solves a multitude of problems but actually using the freezer paper to get the right shapes in the first place if that template is right and you've drawn it onto the front of your fabric you've got a line there to follow it the st stitch in itself is incredibly simple it's a really simple invisible slip stitch which we did on the clamshells which we do on the back of our bindings exactly the same um, principle as that um, really it is about the getting the templates right um, and making sure that you know, you've got your think about where your placement is um, does anybody want me to show you anything again is there anything there that you want me to go through again Angela says it looks very therapeutic it is I do I do quite enjoy this I, I when, when I was doing this one um, at first I found it quite stressful because I was like oh you know I'm not not sure I'm getting this right but once you get into it actually there's something very gentle and peaceful about just sat there doing a little bit of hand stitching like that um you can sit in front of the telly stick a good film on a bit of doris day a bit of calamity jane <laughs> something like that and it's it's a really really peaceful way of sewing so any other questions there drew excuse um, me i'm gonna blow my nose because my nose is terrible carrie said it's very relaxing as well yeah yeah, it is. It's lovely. Okay. Everybody all right with the process, though? Is there any steps there you want me to go through again? Marilyn asked, could you use something instead of freezer paper? Um, I suppose you could. You could actually photocopy this lots of times and cut out your shapes and put your shape on your fabric and just draw around your shape. You could do that, absolutely. If you were doing, say you were going to do like 20 of these blocks... You could use template plastic and make a template for each of your shapes because that's all the freezer paper is. It's a temporary template. Temporary template. <laughs> that's a mouthful. Um, so yes, you could you could make templates out of template plastic. You know, like we did with the clamshells. You know, draw them out and use those to transfer because all this is doing is transferring the shape onto the fabric. That's all it is. Um, if you're using all very very pale fabrics, I wonder if you could see this through. You might actually, if you had a light box, if you have a light box, you would probably be able to see, hang on, let me do this so you can see. So if you had a light, I don't know if you can see, <laughs> no, this is not going to work, is it? Hang on, temporary light box. <laughs> there we go. So if you had it on a light box, you could actually see the shapes through the fabric on light fabrics and you could just pencil, pencil them on. Okay. So, um, but I... I mean, freeze papers, it's nothing. It's a pound a metre, and that's like a half a quarter of a metre, you know, so it's pence. Um, and I like the fact that they'll all be the same because I've drawn them and I can use them three or four times. But yes, you could use lots of other methods. If you've got a light box, you could try that. Uh, Jan says, yes, uh, thanks, seems very clear. Good, good, I'm glad. Um, yeah, it's, like I said, have a little play. It's just another way of doing applique. It's another way of, another method um, you know and we have lots of hand stitches as well as machine stitches and um, people that don't necessarily want to machine stitch or don't have a sewing machine so this is a nice way of, of doing a bit of applique without without that uh jonas how do i get uh template plastic uh we've got some more just come in actually i will uh, make sure the website's updated this afternoon we've um we should have some template plastic on, on our website she also asked is it like acetate uh, you could use acetate, yes. If you've got a, a relatively sturdy acetate, um, I, if I've got any I haven't got any template plastic lying around at the moment. Um, it is. It's like a slightly thicker acetate, but you could use acetate. Yeah, that would work if you've got some of that. As long as it's got enough um, stiffness to it that you, you know, you're able to draw around it, that it will hold hold its shape enough that you can draw around it. That's about it. Then. Cool. Cool, I'm glad. Okay, fabulous. So um, that's needle turn, ladies. Um, hope you enjoyed my little ramble earlier on about my quilt. Um, so I made a bit of a mistake. Oops. Um, I think when I was on on Wednesday, I said that block of the week that I was going to Chanda on Wednesday. I'm not. I'm going on Thursday. 
oops <laughs> um so yeah i had it in my head that the 28th was wednesday so i couldn't do block of the week I, we were going to swap so i was going to do wednesday i was going to do thursday blah 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 but no i'm going to chandra on thursday so <laughs> that means block of the week is still happening on wednesday so we've got no class on monday we've got because it's bank holiday so we're having sunday monday off um no class on monday Tuesday um, I'm going to do some crochet I'm going to do a combination of crochet stitches Wednesday will be block of the month a uh, block of the week and I'm going to do two blocks I'm going to do a plique block and another block which I haven't decided yet so because you, you're missing out on Mondays Thursday Sarah has going to do some going to do some prairie star ornaments and then Friday I'm going to do a bit of an introduction to red work so again a little bit more hand stuff um, and then Saturday we've got our big sale so we'll be over in the shop shouting and giggling and being noisy <laughs> so we've got a big sale on this on the saturday so that's for next week so um yeah so i apologize for that i made a complete i had it just had it i don't i don't know what day of the week it is half the time let alone the date I had it in my head 28th was wednesday it's not it's this day <laughs> so um that's what's coming up next week tomorrow i'm going to be back and we're going to be doing some improv placemats um, which you don't they don't have to place mats i've just i'm just doing sm a small project so that you guys can see how it works um you could do it as quick as you go you could make bigger things um all sorts but um it's really funky little design um based on a uh, angela walters design uh, midnight quilter um something i've had been a player with so i thought really fast really fun with summer coming you could make some to be nice and bright out on your patio tables and stuff so um that's what we're, we're back tomorrow with that any last questions before we go, love? Anything? Uh, Terry asked, is the fabric sale on tomorrow? No, next Saturday, honey. Next Saturday. Tomorrow is the improv placemats. It's next Saturday. And then that's it. Cool. Fabulous. Thank you for joining us again, ladies. Um, yes, um, I'll get these products on. If you do want any of them, I'll get them onto the website this afternoon. Um, so give me an hour. I'll, I'll go straight onto it now. But give me about an hour. I think the applique pins are already on there. Um, but these only came in yesterday. Um, I don't think freeze papers on there, but I'll get that on. Um, the tulip template, if you do want it, is still available to buy as well. That's on our website. Um, I've had a, quite a few comments that people couldn't find certain patterns. Actually, just before I do go quickly, so all of our isolation blocks, so anything of any block wise that we've done on these one o'clocks, they are on on our on our web page. You go to shop, you go to kits and patterns. And then there's a subcategory called isolation quilt blocks. And I've put everything that we've done on the Monday and the Wednesday into that section. So they're not muddled up with other patterns like the Janet, um, Janet Clare patterns and all that lot. They've got their own little subsection. So it's in kits and patterns and then isolation quilt blocks. So they're all in there, girls. OK, um, fab. Right. If nobody else has uh, got any questions, I'm going to go make a cup of tea and then I'm going to get on the website. So um, thank you for joining me. Stay safe. Stay home. Well, you know, stay home as much as you can and we will see you soon. We'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock. Bye girls. <laughs>